There we go. Oh, good morning. <laughs> this is Donna Fine with More Than Our View, and I am here with Kimberly Kincaid. Hey, good morning. We are at um, Lori Foster's Reader and Author Get Together, and this is my first time, and it's I've already got my money's worth, and it's 9.30. <laughs> I know. You've been so. busy. <laughs> so uh, we're going to ask um, Kimberly, kind of tell us a little bit about yourself and your books for people that might be new to your stuff. Okay. Um, I write um, small town, sexy small town, contemporary romance and even sexier romantic suspense. Uh, my current suspense series is about firefighters. So uh, over where I'm, where I'm writing, we say firefighters do it hotter. <laughs> but then the cops in my series get a little touchy about that. So, you know, um, it's, uh, but it's a lot of fun. It's like um, if Chicago Fire were on Cinemax instead of primetime, it would be that. So it's really steamy, spicy. And, um, and then the contemporary series is about uh, three brothers who run their family farm in the foothills of the Shenandoah Mountains. Like cowboys with no horses. <laughs> so I noticed that you self-publish and you do a lot of um, kind of help for authors. So I'd love for you to kind of share, because a lot of our readers are either authors or aspiring authors. Sure, so I'd love for you to share a little bit about that. Um, I actually kind of tumbled into self-publishing, um, not by accident, but by like happy circumstance. Um, I had sold a series to a publisher and uh, the, the turnaround time for that takes a long time. They wanted to put my books out uh, all three in a row and production takes a lot of time and effort and you gotta make covers and do edits. And so I had about 15 months worth of time and they said, well in the meantime, why don't you self-publish some novellas and just get your feet wet and kind of build an audience. And it was probably the best thing that ever happened to me. Um, because I, I learned the ropes in a different way and I was able to to kind of build my fan base from the bottom up and talk to people about what they wanted and then I was in control of the content and the covers and it's a lot of work though. It's a lot of work but it's worth it to uh, to be able to roll up your own sleeves and kind of have a, have a really heavy hand in making your own brand and in doing your own marketing and a uh, lot of trial and error, a lot of trial by fire. <laughs> But um, but certainly worth it, and um, and it's just built over time. So I um, I was a hybrid author for a long time, and then and now I'm fully indie, um, and I'm loving it. It's and the best you, thing I ever did. And you'll also coach people on it. I as do, well. I do. Um, I started self publishing when self publishing was kind of in its infancy, and so I took a lot of what I had learned. Um, I had people who would ask me all the time, "Hey, can you help me out with this? Can you help me out with that?" And I thought. Gosh, I can really kind of turn this into you know into a business, and so I do uh, I do author coaching via Skype, and uh, we kind of roll up our sleeves and get really granular about somebody's career and where they are if they're just starting out, um, if they've self published a book or two, if they want to just learn more about marketing or um, you know kind of creating Facebook groups and getting visibility and stuff like that. So it's a lot of fun, and I get to really um, I love to hear about other people's careers. And to, to kind of um, to kind of nurture that because that nurtures me right back. It kind of refills my well to, to see other people's careers and be able to help them out with that. So. so how do you balance making sure you have enough time to write your own story, but then also <laughs> coach? Like, do you limit so much time? Or? I do. I do. Um, I schedule the author coaching um, in uh, they're one hour increments, but I only do a couple of them a week. So they're on a limited basis just because I don't have a body double, even though I really want one. Um, and then that leaves me enough time to do. Um, all the writing on my end and then I mean there's it's a big business so I have to also do editing on my end and I have to do covers on my end and I have to do marketing on my end so it's um but I have a um I have a planner and everything's blocked off in, in color-coded blocks so um you know my kids get a couple of blocks and my family gets blocks and then my career and, and then the coaching gets a couple blocks a week I have a couple <laughs> blocks a week for for everybody <laughs> that's awesome so um what are some common traps that you see authors getting into? Um, this is a really good question. Um, I think so much of it is trial by fire, so there's no way that you guys are not going to fall into traps. I mean, it, everybody does. I did it. I still do it. Um, I think it's very personal. You know what I mean? It's going to be based on career. My traps might not be the same as yours or somebody else's, but um, it's, it's very, very easy when you have when you're looking at someone else's career, to try and want to mirror that and say, like, oh, Bella Andre, I want to have a career like Bella Andre's and I'm going to do exactly what she does. But if you write a different thing or if, you know, if you're in a different part of your career than that other author, the things that work for her aren't going to work for you. And so 
just knowing that you don't have to look like anybody else. Like, where they say, don't be the don't be the next Bella Andre, be the first you. Yeah. So, um, not that Bella's not awesome, because actually she was my mentor for a really long time, um, which is kind of why I just plucked her out of thin air. Um, but um, but yeah, I mean, believing that you have to look like somebody else's career is, is just kind of a, look like you. You know, authenticity and brand and that, that connection that happens from that. Really important. Yeah. All right. So, um, last question. What um, is the most unethical practice you see in the publishing industry? Oh, um, this is a tough one because I, I feel like, yes, there's always going to be some sketchy things that go on, but... For the most part, everybody in the industry is so supportive of everybody else, and every, I mean, I really have not had any negative experiences, thankfully, with, with that, but I think, um, I mean, anything that obviously promotes piracy, I mean, I see, you know, people who may not either be well-educated about exactly, well, I'm going to share this book with one or two people, still piracy, still, you know, the, still just not an ethical thing to do, so, um, you know, from, from the, the end of readers um, kind of sharing content that doesn't belong to them or that isn't meant to be shared. Um, I mean, there's always kind of that pitfall. And, um, but other than that, I mean, really, I, I have nothing negative to say. I just <laughs> love this industry and I've always had really good positive connections. I've been, I think I've been, um, you know, lucky to, in that regard to have that. Awesome. Thank you so much oh, for joining us. my pleasure, my pleasure. Okay. And you'll also be able to see our interview on Facebook Live. We'll see you later.